Hi folks, welcome to Your World with Prakash Kapila. Today our topic, we have a very interesting topic today. Um, recently, uh, by uh, there is a midterm elections in US and uh, it was supposed to be a very a bad thing for Biden because a lot of Republicans, uh, a lot of people were expecting that there is a Republican wave and uh, he would be um, uh, you know, beaten down in uh, House as well as Senate. So with us, we have uh, uh, one of the politically very active persons, Satish Garmela Garu. He has been, uh, I, I will let him uh, speak about his legacy. He is the first Telugu person who is a councilman in um, North Carolina. Sir, please uh, tell about yourself to our viewers and uh, your legacy, everything that okay. interests you. Uh, th thanks, Prakash, uh, and thanks for having me. And uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, my name is Satish Garamela. I'm on the Morris Town Council. I'm the first Indian um, elected, Indian born elected American uh, for the state of North Carolina. Um, Congratulations. Like, it's Thank been you. my eighth year um, that I've been doing this. And I love what I do because uh, it not only helps me understand the politics that goes on, but also help our community. You know, my you know community is almost a uh, forty percent Asian population, and with that comes a lot of responsibility, a lot of issues. So I'm well connected with the, um, all the branches where we can with immigrations and others. You know, like even. Um, with the police and the aunties to see what we can help with the community. So I'm glad, you know, like to talk about the midterm elections and other stuff. So it is amazing um, that, uh, and it's the right time that you're talking about this because we are all excited and every night the polls are changing. Yeah. It's such a close uh, thing and it's pretty exciting to talk about it. Awesome, awesome, great. So without much ado, let's uh, jump into the uh, political debate right now uh, mm -hmm. that's going around in US uh, about the midterm elections. So what is your take? What happened in midterm elections? I, I, I agree with your first statement too, right? Like, you know, that uh, we thought uh, the Republicans will sweep the entire midterm and that was kind of a given in you know, all the pundits were talking about it. And uh, so... We thought um, like that's going to happen, but it um, it is very surprising um, that uh, we can literally correlate like some of the close like some of the Senate races, like you know, uh, take Pennsylvania and others where we thought you know were clean shot, um, were like uh, the Democrats won, and um, and I was doing some analysis of all the races, you know, like take it Arizona, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, Nevada. And uh, it's it's actually, um, I would say, if at all, you know, it's the Trump, which basically Trump and those candidates did not really win any of the uh, things. And today there was a big statement from one of the uh, secretaries, you know, and saying that, uh, like, there's two things. There's Trumpism and there is Republican Party. So the two Trump, uh, the, the Trumpism guys, uh, whoever the people who supported, uh, you know, they didn't want to certify the elections and like take, for example, Arizona, you know, the guy basically said he didn't want to do it more clearly. And he was and he lost the election to, uh, you know, and that's that was a big news because we didn't expect Mark Kelly to just win like that. But uh, like they had dug their own graves, to be honest, and um, and now it's the, the all the eyes are in Nevada, so it's like five, less than five hundred votes, and uh, where especially you look at uh, uh, Georgia, they thought it was a clean sweep of a Republican, and now it's going into a runoff. Runoff. Yeah. So 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 these so that is one factor, and there are several other factors. Yeah, I will be more than happy to go one by one on those things. But uh, yeah, please, yeah. So um, to interject, um, those for those who don't know what runoff means, in Georgia there is a, a law that states that if you if any incumbent doesn't get fifty one percent of the total votes poll, mm -hmm. that means if out of uh, out of uh, fifteen people, ten people voted, and you should get at least six votes. So if 
no uh, contestant gets more than 51% or 51% or more then uh, there will be a runoff so there were three contestants and mm-hmm. only um, two contestants will do the runoff because the the, the third person got very less uh, voting and, and, yeah and and to add to that also like right like you know um it's less than when when it's very low where when that um when the margin is very low one of the candidates has a right to call for a runoff you know it's it, he has that right to do it so that to recount or even um, basically do it like especially many a times i'm expecting a recount in uh, nevada if it, it goes to like you know a, a two digit or three digit uh, vote margin so that's going to happen so i don't think the elections will be very close because if you look at the senate you know all the uh, the democrats need is only one more and the republicans need two um which actually is very good for the democrats because i personally um you know i feel that will if if the democrats win the senate it will open up a lot of things because from last two years all the ambassador appointments and all those things are stuck uh-huh. so i'm i'm expecting to get you know new ambassador to india and um, all all the other countries which have been already told but they need senate confirmation and if the senate has a democratic majority those things will be very quickly done and that's kind of good because we need representation of the new um, ambassadors going all across the country all right. across the world yeah so to come at, to take one step back so why this uh, red wave was expected was uh, because there are a lot of things that went bad for biden at least in the public view uh, one was the inflation um, it was going at nine before the elections like two months before elections it is 9% mm-hmm. um now it has come down drastically to 7% but still the inflation yeah. because of that inflation the interest rates were kept rising rising every time um it was like 75 basis point which means uh, 0.75% yeah. um increase so like that they did four times Mm-hmm. the same thing so it came down it's now around 4.25% is the interest rate so this is uh, from zero to that level right from mm-hmm. this level to that level in a very quick span it happened mm-hmm. so that is one thing that uh, shocked the whole uh, economy and the market Absolutely. and people do who don't understand uh, inflation uh, mm-hmm. the uh, low class uh, the low income earners uh who will be more affected because of this inflation the food prices mm-hmm. increase the milk increase yeah, exactly. gas lean increase gas means petrol right uh, mm-hmm. people go to work um two to three jobs you, you you just can't walk only no, no. in the metropol- yeah. metropolitan areas like new york city have the luxury of not uh, using the car but otherwise wherever you are in america you have to use the car car is your legs exactly so I, I, with with those things and um, also um, because of um, a russian war russian mm-hmm. ukraine war and china uae india um, on the other side of uh, what us wants to uh, wants mm-hmm. to have them like they wanted uh, all these countries to boycott russia but uh, it's yeah. evident that they have not so with this kind of background uh inflation russia war and um, losing the influence over uh, the other country the soft power right uh, the soft power is what is more um important for america or any other country and that soft power ha- in, uh, is perceived as being lost because the uh, countries thought that uh, aligning with america is not good for themselves whether it's china whether it's uae whether it's india absolutely yeah so 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 you know you you bring a lot of uh, points so, so let me you know go double click on each one of them right so so let's take uh, ukraine for example you know i i talked to a lot of the population and like my american friends right like uh, uh it is a very strong sentiment because us is one country who doesn't like dictatorship on the other side because they're obsessed if you see not uh, not 
Korea before. So now they are not happy with what Putin is saying because they're worried like, you know, he's going to Ukraine, he went to Crimea before, and what would we go to the other countries? So the people, the American people, are ready to take the hit on the gas or other areas because they just don't want any dictatorship. And 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 Biden very was very smart in 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 maneuvering this, like by saying it is a threat to the democracy. And the Congress came together, and I think they've spent billions of dollars in giving in arms and other things, and giving the logistic support. Um, you know, in terms of satellite positioning or you know the arms and which are needed to counter Russia. So so um, they are. They are with the people, you know, with the Ukrainian people. And so when I asked one of my close friends, he says, I'm ready even if the gas price goes $10, that I am ready to take the hit uh-huh. as long as the Russia is put under control. So that's one sentiment. And 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 yes, so um, the gas prices have certainly gone along with the gas prices, you know, being in the city council, like all our beds and everything. The cost of it has gone up almost 20 percent. The person it is affecting the people, the blue collar jobs, because they have a fixed income. They get fifteen dollars, twelve dollars. And when they're paying twice the gas price and the cost of the food, it is certainly hitting them. But the only thing that is really holding them is they don't want a dictatorship to basically take control. Uh, and that's a sacrifice that they're doing, you know. But also on the other end, let's let's take it right. You're right. Um, the the Biden administration failed in having uh, like a contract with OPEC to keep the you know pump the gases. So they 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 in turn started increasing, you know, basically putting our reserves into the economy so that the gas prices can come lower. So they tried it. Um, um, and for a small, small period of time, it was successful. But then recently, when they lost uh, that contract again with OPEC, the gas prices have climbed again. But but uh, the main thing I would also say is um, Roe versus Wade. That played a very big role. You know? Roe versus Wade. Okay. Yeah, because that you know the Supreme Court of India recently said it is. The woman who basically has the right to do everything, and that Supreme was Court of U- USA, right? Of, no, no, Supreme of India recently uh, made this call. You know, and I, it would have been smart if they, the U.S. Supreme Court, had done the same thing. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, sometimes I feel like you know, uh, the Indian policies are much uh, liberal and uh, more uh, pro. You know, like uh, we have a woman president, we had a woman prime minister. But when it comes to U.S., we still don't have a, a woman president here. So, right. so, uh, and 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 that that picked up a lot of people because the because no one likes and you know someone the government dictating how the woman's body should be used, and that brought a lot of young voters in, and uh, that and that was a big change in in the vote bank. Um, you know, I have been doing polls for almost now ten to twelve years. The amount of lines that came in and early voting, it was all young voters who were pretty mad of how things are going on and they, they just did not like it. So so that was one of a big factor of why um, the turnout was pretty good and that actually favored uh, Biden um, because, you know, he, he pretty much, you can say, he did not challenge it. He used yeah. it as a weapon to get his vote bank and his uh, people mobilized. Yeah, that's true. So um, to summarize, e- even though the gas prices have increased a lot, mm-hmm. the petroleum reserves were pushed into the market so that mm-hmm. the price that has increased will come down because of yeah. demand yeah. supply. Uh, thing. Mm-hmm. The more supply, the demand uh, mm-hmm. is met and the price doesn't increase. So like that, they have reduced the uh, strategic reserves quite a bit. And they asked yeah. uh, UAE if they can, OPEC, if they can uh, increase the production. OPEC said they won't increase any production. Yeah. So uh, the strategic reserves uh, helped a little bit, but then again, the prices yeah. started. And, 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 and also, also they, the other thing is also like, you know, uh, during the Trump era, they canceled the, the Paris Agreement Paris for climate agreement. change. 
and and people here are very very you know uh, particular about the climate especially the younger generation they care about the environment they care about the things so so like biden stopped all the you know oil rigging uh drills and other things which they had the permissions to do it then so that way you know to protect the environment uh, is a critical piece that attracted a lot of the young people and um, that helped them you know to steer some of the votes and the other thing is like you know the loan um like you know waivers um mm-hmm. uh, that uh, thing you know under a certain amount of dollars that helped too so so there are several things a uh, bottom line i would say is like you know um he was able to mobilize the young voters um and he was able to say you know this is a war against democracy when it came to ukraine and um, the trump actually did not help any of the republicans because if they had gone on on an alone like you know as a true republican they they might have won but if you're looking at the trend of all the people he has nominated and who actually basically said that they would not certify the elections of the 2020 they pretty much are lost the election too so, so uh, several factors that played in in his favor, in spite of the economy being so bad and and the inflation rate so high. So overall, um, how do you rate Biden's presidency? Is Biden getting more stronger, or he's so, more weaker? I mean, um, so so so, so this, in, coming into the elections, uh, you uh, he the, was perceived more weaker, and yeah. after the elections. I mean, uh, from a uh, local uh, uh, intra-U.S. perspective and international perspective, give us your uh, uh, thoughts about Biden's presidency and what we overlooked in Biden. Yeah, uh, see, see, Biden has been in this field for s- several decades. So, so yes, he's getting older, but um, he knows uh, how to maneuver the things, and he has good people around him you know we have one of our my close friends the ronnie chatterjee he is in the white house advising on economic policies and other things uh, he's a deep law professor and so they have i know several people in the white house who work very hard to come up with nice policies the head of uh, like nsa is an indian guy you know who is oh, yeah. really, um, helping with the, all the science uh, projects so Biden is, has appointed key people, um, key Indian people in many of his administrations who are giving him good advice along with all the others, you know, are doing. But it's it's uh, like, uh, would he be a good candidate for next election, right? That's the that's a million dollar question everyone is asking about. Um, so it all depends on who the opponent is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say if it is Trump, then Biden is a good candidate. Because uh, Trump has a lot of values that he comes up with. But if the Republican Party picks uh, DeSantis, who has actually just won the election. Landslide. Uh, landslide election, and who would be a good fight. And uh, he doesn't come with a lot of baggage. And the Republican Party put their pressure against him. Then I'm sure he will give a big fight to Biden. Um, and so, so, and then, and, and also, like, to be honest, I cannot see any leader on the democratic party that who would uh, replace him right now you know um like uh Pete Buttigieg is is the closest that could be but i i don't know if uh, he's there yet you know um the sentiments are you know Kamala Harris might not be a nominee for the president too so so it it all depends you know like if it is actually good for Biden if Trump um, is an opponent because oh, okay. then, then then it becomes easy because uh, um, because looking at the trends of all the election right now so it will favor him but if DeSantis or someone else comes in then you know uh, the true Republicans are come because many of the Republicans didn't even show up to the polls because they were Trump nominated and they voted Democrat too. So, so, so it, it, the trend here is pretty high, uh, and the sentiments are pretty strong. Um, so we are just looking at who the Republican nominee would be, and that would. This is a um, within the U.S. perspective of President mm-hmm. Biden. 
what, what do you think uh, people overlooked uh, in the international arena? Uh, in, 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 so international arena, right? Like, see, U.S. is, um, it depends on the policies, right? Like, we are not doing that great at different things, you know, but uh, uh, U.S. has been a great ally to uh, India, and uh, those relations are becoming stronger. But, uh, and, and the, uh, uh, the Indian government was very clean in how basically talking of why they were taking oil from Russia because for the needs and this one. And uh, it, it, it is a very rare that, uh, you know, they allowed it. The, the, the U.S. government understood, like, you know, India is a very close ally and they need oil. And the, the previous... Um, like over the decades, the relationship with Russia with ammunitions and other things. So it was a business uh, thing that they knew, like um, they're taking it not for to basically censor, but for their own needs of the people. And and so every country has to, you know, uh, has to protect their own interests. So uh, India was doing uh, in that way. And, and U.S. was like, lot, uh, U.S. Um, bureaucrats understood that. But it didn't fit very well with the U.S. people because the press reports were pretty, you know, bad that everyone other than India and China are siding with Russia. So I had a lot of people coming and talking to me. Why is it happening? So it took me a long time to make them understand it's not for any other reason. It is just a survival of the, the fittest. And it is. And the inflation, if you look at it, the dollar has gone up highest that we have ever, ever seen. It's almost touching 83 to $85. And and that is hitting, uh, the, you know, it's again, like these are the soft things, you know, they understand, but the dollar price is going up so high, which is not good for India either, because for anything they buy, they're, they're almost putting uh, 15 to 20% more money. So um, with regards to China and US, uh, did uh, Xi Jinping underestimate Biden. Um, I believe that with the Taiwan fiasco, mm -hmm. Nancy uh, uh, Pelosi mm -hmm. going there and uh, reassuring Taiwanese uh, that the uh, US is going to be there, that was a shocker. I mean, people thought that- Yeah, uh, uh, yeah actually that move, you know, if you, this, this issue has been going on for a long time, you know, like the South Sea who has a monopoly on it and the Southern fleet of the US uh, you know, Navy, which is continuously there, has been deployed. And when Nancy Pelosi made that call and they went there, you know, China didn't like it, you know, but in the uh, U.S. is something who doesn't care about any threats, you know, for the integrity. And uh, she did. And uh, it was very well taken uh, from the U.S. people because yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like a historic move. You know, you had the entire... Um, southern fleet and like you know aircraft carriers protecting uh, it, it was it was a show tell you know you can say so to tell china hey it's place that hey you're not you know the big daddy in the race. <laughs> uh, so, so obviously you know like china is like the u.s is still heavily depending on china for a supply chain and that's one thing that worries me because, uh, like, uh, you take cars, you take anything, you know, the chips. Um, a lot of uh, now things have developed, uh, especially uh, the trillion dollar infrastructure um, that has been put in place. In next two years, that money will start trickling for the 2024 election. That helps Biden a lot. Because you'll see the money going to the states, you'll see the progress, you'll see a lot of people getting jobs with that money, um, and so so that that is something which uh, are people doing that has not been done since uh, Eisenhower. Um, that amount of money putting into infrastructures. Right. So right. so that it's that's been that, like sixty years. Huh? I mean, 60 yeah, years exactly. Then. You know, like uh, at that time it was the recession that caused that Eisenhower to do that. Now this is like putting back a uh, trillion dollars and that's a lot of money and uh, every town, my town is getting benefited with those money, our power monies and like, and especially the COVID, like, right, they, they pump a lot of money to the states, to the towns uh, to recover back, you know, because we lost a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses went down. So giving small business loans, waiving, you know, PPPs and other things. 
uh, like uh, he, he was lucky in in one way because he where it was towards the end of the pandemic and uh, but he didn't take that lightly and he you know activated the right things um so so the economy i feel over the next two years so will boom back again um and uh, that would help um, the the democrats are you know and biden if he's the nominee for the presidential election so will your party get the next president then i i'm i'm sure you know like uh, he 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 will it all depends on the other person right as i said you know if it is trump i'm sure the you know biden and democrats and they will win uh so it, it, like what used to be two years or three years ago like you know uh, anything that trump plus was like a de facto winning but looking at all these races pennsylvania arizona in like you know, georgia wisconsin uh, those are like shoe shot wins you know like we lost like being from north carolina i feel a little sad that we lost uh, uh, like a close senate say race you know sherry beasley was was bound to win but she concentrated more on the healthcare and the cost of medicare and other areas but she did not you know talk about the economy and his opponent was very smart in talking about the gas prices the cost of inflation and those areas and that he was able to mobilize the blue collar jobs to vote for him and and that actually did attract you know how you marketed it uh, she lost the election but we were expecting that she would win so 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 and those are the kind of things where um you know where the people are closely watching if the gas prices is important uh, for the blue collar jobs and uh, i i feel if we can ease that economy back and with the uh, infrastructure you know money flowing into the states and federal um the economy will bound back awesome sir uh, it's uh, really like 30 minutes past like this and oh, <laughs> we're still not done yet <laughs> yeah so overall um you say biden is becoming stronger i i, w- I would say like you know yeah, i would say trump is making biden stronger <laughs> i would never say that you know I, i would i would like that the, the election clearly has shown you know like uh, all it has been become a trend what he endorses they are losing and so uh, if he had not touched his hand you know uh <laughs> but it would have been not stronger so it is a blessing to the democratic party i would say okay on this uh, note uh, uh thank you thanks a lot uh, for sharing your ideas and uh, regarding trump and anti trumpism that's another show um okay. promise that <laughs> okay <laughs> Nice uh, talking to you Satish Garu. Uh, okay, ab- absolutely my pleasure and thanks for having me and uh, thanks for all the good your network works on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.